The acid catalyzed addition of water to an alkene follows the typical electrophilic addition mechanism. This is a two-step process where the double bond first reacts with an electrophile. The pi electrons are used to form a sigma bond, while the pi bond breaks, to form a carbocation. That carbocation intermediate is really reactive. The carbon needs a pair of electrons, so it reacts with a nucleophile to form a second sigma bond. Overall, we have 1-2 addition. The electrophile is added to one carbon, and the nucleophile is added to the adjacent carbon. There are two special factors we need to think about. One is regioselectivity, and the other is stereochemistry. With regard to regioselectivity, the question is, does the electrophile bond to the left-hand carbon or the right-hand carbon, or both carbons? Is there a preference or not? With, inspect, with respect to stereochemistry, we have to wonder if E, C, stereoisomers of the alkene make any difference in the outcome in the product. And we have to wonder if the product actually makes stereoisomers. Those carbons might be stereogenic centers, and if so, we could have R and S configurations at each carbon. We'll have to keep both of these things in mind as we look at specific reactions like the addition of water. The addition of water to a double bond can be accomplished by using sulfuric acid together with water. It's worth remembering that sulfuric acid fully protonates water, so when we put those two together, a proton from the sulfuric acid is transferred to water. This forms H3O+, which is the actual electrophile in the hydration reaction we're talking about now. I'm going to write H3O plus here as the actual reagent. And that's the electrophile that's involved in the first step. The pi electrons form a bond with the proton, while these electrons stay with the water molecule. In a second step, the carbocation reacts with water. That water is a good nucleophile. It has a pair of electrons to use to form a sigma bond reacting with that carbocation. And that oxygen has a positive charge because it has one too many protons on it. When it donated a pair of electrons to form the sigma bond, it picked up that positive charge. The proton is lost to water acting as a base in a final step. And the byproduct is H3O+. Notice we start this reaction by a step that consumes H3O+, and we finish the reaction in a step that regenerates it. H3O+, is a true catalyst. Now we said we should keep our eye out for regiochemistry and stereochemistry considerations. So let's look at that product. The product doesn't have a stereogenic center at either carbon, so there is no stereochemistry question here. But there is a regioselectivity question, isn't there? In fact, this reaction is highly regioselective. A hydroxyl group ends up on the carbon that is more highly substituted. The hydrogen adds to the carbon of the double bond that has the most hydrogens. This is known as Markovnikov's rule. While this is a useful statement of fact, and we can memorize the fact that the hydrogen adds to the carbon that has more hydrogens, it's better if we understand it. So let's take a little look. The alternative product, if we had the other regioselectivity, would put the electrophile, a proton, on the other carbon. This generates a secondary carbocation while the other regioselectivity generates a tertiary carbocation. Tertiary carbocations are more stable, so they're preferentially formed. Looking at this in terms of the energy diagram, I've drawn out the energy curve for addition as we actually observe it. It forms a tertiary carbocation by the proton adding to the carbon that already has more hydrogens. In terms of the reaction, as you see it down below, it's the light-colored carbocation that's formed. The alternative is shown in bright blue on the right. It's a secondary carbocation. Secondary carbocations are less stable. They're higher in energy, and that turns out to mean that their transition state leading to their formation is higher in energy. This is in accord with Hammond's postulate, which says that when we have endothermic reactions, the transition state to form what we're making looks a lot like that product that we're making. So the transition state looks a lot like a secondary carbocation or a tertiary carbocation. And because alkyl groups stabilize carbocations, they also stabilize the transition state. Because the transition state has a higher hump, the activation energy that must be surmounted to make the secondary carbocation is greater, so the reaction is slower. 
In fact, it's so much slower that this reaction is highly regioselective. The reaction forms the tertiary carbocation almost exclusively. So on the basis of energetics, as well as what we actually observe, we can rule out the formation of the secondary carbocation. The reaction is highly regioselective. Well, this reaction doesn't have any stereochemical implications associated with it, but let's look at a case that does. This alkene has E, Z stereoisomers, and I've drawn the Z stereoisomer. Let me write the hydrogen in this molecule, just for emphasis, that has the Z stereochemistry. As we know, this reaction is regioselective. The hydroxyl group adds to the more highly substituted carbon. And now we have two stereoisomers possible, enantiomers. One is R and one is S. And when we look at the products, we discover they're made in equal amounts. We've made a racemic mixture. To understand this result, we need to look at the reaction mechanism and look carefully at the carbocation intermediate that's formed. Protonation adds the hydrogen to the carbon that already has more hydrogens. It makes a carbocation that we write like this. Now I want to rotate this structure so we can see the lobes of the empty p orbital on that carbocation. I'm looking at this carbon right here, the one I put in bright blue. It has the propyl group, an ethyl group, and a methyl group attached to it. Writing these three groups attached to the carbon, all in the same plane, the plane sticking out perpendicular to the screen. Let's just draw in the lobes of the p orbital like this. This carbon has a positive charge on it. Now water as a nucleophile can add to either lobe of that empty p orbital. Nucleophile adds from the top, or the nucleophile adds from the bottom. One makes the S enantiomer, the other makes the R enantiomer. Because approaching from the top and the bottom is equally probable, we make a 50-50 mixture, a racemic mixture of the two enantiomers. So hydration of alkenes is highly regioselective, but the reaction isn't stereospecific. The stereochemistry of the reacting alkene does not determine the stereochemistry of the products.